This week on Christian World News, journey with us to one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. I come from a very ancient, perhaps one of the most ancient cultures in the world. 6,000 miles from the shores of America, the tiny nation of Georgia fights to preserve its Christian past, present, and future. Georgians have always had to defend their faith, even to the last drop of blood. And meet one of Georgia's most famous men, leading the charge to protect faith in his nation. Hello everyone, welcome to this week's edition of Christian World News. I'm George Thomas. On this special edition of the broadcast, we focus on a part of the world Few people have ever heard of or know its location. I travel some 6,000 miles to the tiny nation of Georgia. No, I am not talking about the state here in the U.S., but an ancient land where culture, tradition, and faith in Jesus Christ run deep. It was famed novelist John Steinbeck who, while traveling through the Soviet Union in 1947, referred to this land as a kind of second heaven. And it's easy to see why. Once part of the communist empire, and often called the Riviera of the Soviet Union, the Republic of Georgia nestles between the Caucasus Mountains and the Black Sea. Turkey and Armenia flank its southern border, Azerbaijan is to the east, Russia to the north. Levan Vazadze is a Georgian businessman. I come from a very ancient, perhaps one of the most ancient cultures in the world. An ancient place where people speak a language that's over 2,000 years old. Ethnographer Luar Sab Togonitse says his is a country that has also witnessed its fair share of turmoil. Georgians go through a lot. Because of the geographical location, many armies, invaders, would pass this way. History here is measured in millennia, not centuries. And throughout the ages, your country has been the playground for numerous empires. The Ottomans the Persians, the Greeks, the, the Byzantine Empire, the Romans, the Mongols, the Russians. In the capital city of Tbilisi, the ancient and modern mix seamlessly to create a beautiful portrait of Georgia's rich culture and traditions. One of the best ways to take in the sights and sounds of uh, Tbilisi is to take one of these trolleys up the mountain. In filming these scenes of Tbilisi and stunning countryside landscapes, Georgian cameraman Georgi Shamazana said it best. Every time I travel in different regions of my country, I feel like I'm traveling through thousands of years of history. Georgians are legendary for their hospitality. They believe guests come from God and as such are treated with honor. Their food mm, is simply out of this world. For example, you have this amazing dish, it's called khinkali and the all famous hachapuri. Friendship is highly valued in the society and family is paramount. But if there is one thing many Georgians cherish most, it is their faith. Vasadze says Christianity, above all else, has protected and preserved his nation. The reason Georgia remained what it is, because our nation has a profound feeling of responsibility to holding on to the eternal features of our national character, which by all means are rooted in the Christian culture. 
Georgia is one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. Its Christian heritage can be traced here to the small town of Mshketa. It was around 326 AD when a woman evangelist named Nino started preaching the gospel here. And where these two rivers meet, two main rivers of Georgia, uh, there was a big baptism. And it's considered to be second Jerusalem for Georgians. It's a holy place. Christianity spread to the rest of the country and in about 10 years became the state religion. Five crosses symbolizing Christianity's influence adorned the Georgia national flag. Dating back to the fourth century, the church has played a significant role in the society. In fact, about 80% of Georgians say they belong to the Orthodox Church. Georgians have always had to defend their faith, even to the last drop of blood. Iona Gamrekeli is a prominent leader in the Georgian Orthodox Church. He says over the centuries, many Christians became martyrs for refusing to renounce their faith. In 1226 alone, Muslim invaders beheaded more than 100,000 Georgian Christians. There have been numerous attempts by invading armies to force us to give up our faith, but we never back down. Ellen Kavlelashvili is curator at Georgia's National Museum. She has in her collection priceless manuscripts, rare Bibles and other historical artifacts documenting Georgia's Christian heritage. Today, the role of Christianity is even more significant as we face new challenges. Kavle Lashveli believes her country today stands at a crossroads, with the countries of Central Asia, Russia, Europe and the Middle East all vying for cultural and religious influence. She says tiny Georgia must once again stand to protect her heritage. I hope Georgia's example of unconditional love and dedication to faith are a testimony to all mankind. People should realize that the absence of faith is disastrous for a nation. Christianity is how we survived in the past, and it's how we will survive in the future. Up next, as our special coverage from Georgia continues, a closer look at how modern influences are challenging this nation's deep religious values. Get Pat Robertson's latest teaching. Ask anything, and people have done just that. Can Satan read our minds? What is the real deal on cremation? What are the really bad sins? You can ask a whole bunch of questions all at one time. <laughs> Partner with CBN, and we'll send you Pat Robertson's latest teaching, Ask Anything. I think it's hard for people today to know what's right or wrong, but there is a biblical standard. I try to stay close to the Word of God and to give you answers from the Word of God. Get biblical answers to today's probing questions on finance, relationships, career, health, spiritual well-being, and much more. What's the Bible say when we're dealing with issues, for example, of transgender? And then how, as Christians, do we deal with it? It's a good question. When is it the right time to sever ties with a family member? Ask anything. Biblical answers to life's most probing questions. Call now to get Ask Anything. Life. It's meant to be lived fully. Jesus said it, I came to give you life, life to the fullest, life in your family, life in your finances, life in your body, mind, and spirit, life in your every day. At CBN.com, we're taking what Jesus said seriously. We're here to help you discover life. Life. Live it fully. CBN.com.
and welcome back to the broadcast. The Republic of Georgia is one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. For centuries, numerous empires have tried to eliminate Christianity there. Now, Georgia faces a new challenge to its values and its faith, this time from the United States and Europe. 25 years after the collapse of the Soviet Union, Georgia's prime minister says forging ties with the West is in his country's best interest. There is a very clear will of Georgian people and population to be pro-Western, to be pro-European. The tiny nation of Georgia lies between Russia and Turkey, while the majority here favor closer ties. We are not saying we are against West. I always say I'm a big enthusiast of selective Westernization of Georgia. Many like Lovan Vazadze insist the opening must not happen at the expense of Georgia's faith and family values. We'll take all the productive, progressive things from you, but we'll throw in garbage all the nonsense. And Unfortunately, in this particular case, this means your current pseudo-moral standards need to stay outside of Georgia. Vasadze is a prominent Georgian businessman and pro-family advocate. The pseudo-moral standards he refers to are efforts by the US and EU to force Georgia into accepting homosexual practices and same-sex marriage as societal norms. If you think indecent radically sexual behavior is what you want to do, that's your choice. But if I think that this is an embarrassing sin, I want to remain in society which is allowed to say that. Much to his dismay, the Georgian parliament, under pressure from the European Union and with help from international pro-gay groups, passed a controversial law in 2014 making it illegal to discriminate against people on the basis of their sexual orientation. Vazadze says the decision amounted to the legalization of homosexuality in Georgia. You say this law is part of an international agenda. What is that agenda? To destroy a family. I, I, I believe the front line of this war is in every living room and in every bedroom where your wife and my wife, our children, sleep. The front line is now spreading to Georgian classrooms, with children as young as eight being taught gender theory. To somehow alter and change... Tina Tin Khorbaladze is director of a pro-family organization. She says the aim is simple yet alarming. To change the thinking of the children, to be open and to accept the things that still my generation and elder generation considered to be not really acceptable. Georgia is deeply conservative. More than 80% of the population here say they belong to the Orthodox Church. And polls show a majority side with the church in opposing anything other than traditional heterosexual relationships. We feel the responsibility for the future of this country, for the future of our children and next generation. But not everyone agrees with the church's stance on marriage. Some human rights groups have labeled this country one of the most homophobic nations in the world. Are you afraid for your life? Um, As for me personally, yes, because my life is in danger in Georgia, and not just because of my sexual orientation, but because of my professional activities as well. Georgi Tatashvili is transgender. He rarely gives interviews, but agreed to meet with CBN News at an undisclosed location in the capital. He is a lawyer for the LGBT community and says he has paid a price for it. They've arrested you, they've beaten you. Yes, many times I was beaten by policemen, ordinary citizens, and in general for many people. Tatashvili made headlines earlier this year when he became the first person ever to file a suit with the Constitutional Court seeking same-sex marriage. The lawsuit is still pending. A majority of Georgians today believe that what you're doing, your lifestyle, is sinful. And they say that you are destroying their country. I think that this is the case, and I'm not surprised people feel this way. The principles of secularism are practically violated in Georgia. The Orthodox Church puts so much pressure on the society to make sure Georgian human rights are not extended to include LGBT people. Meanwhile, Levan Vazadze worries the pressure to become more accepting of homosexuality in Georgia will only intensify 
following last year's controversial Supreme Court decision legalizing same-sex marriage in America. He bemoans the fact that since the ruling, many in America are too afraid to speak out against homosexuality. You can no longer freely express your opinion about what's shameful and what is disgraceful, and you are uh, crucified for that. The whole concept of sin is being abolished. Where is it? Uh, the metamorphosis in English language is staggering. I studied it since I was a child, and I remember that shame meant shame. In modern English, when someone says it's a shame, he or she means it's a pity. So we see a gutting of the concept of shame. Vazadze is praying Georgia never reaches that point. He's urging his fellow countrymen to be bold in proclaiming the truth in love. Is it your opinion that the church in Georgia, Christians in Georgia like yourself, are in the end going to determine the future of your country? What else? Of course. That's it. Nothing else. As our special coverage continues, meet the most trusted man in, the, in Georgia who is fighting to keep faith alive. Get Pat Robertson's latest teaching, Ask Anything. When a family isn't giving a full tithe, does that limit God's financial blessing in their lives? It's a good question. Does God ever speak audibly? Have you ever heard God's voice? Get answers to today's probing questions on finance, relationships, career, health, and spiritual well-being. People want to know what does God say about yeah. these things. Ask Anything. Available now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. When you give, smiles grow bigger. When you care, homes are happier. When you comfort, the hurt goes away. When we all come together to love, miracles happen. Millennials are flocking to church. We're all in this together. There's no pretenses. It's not an exaggeration to say that we love to meet them and that we love to know their stories. And welcome back to the broadcast. You know, across Europe, churches are closing as growing numbers of Christians abandon the faith. But in the nation of Georgia, the opposite is happening. Thanks to the efforts of one man, Christianity there is not only alive, it's thriving. On any given Sunday morning, you'll find most churches in Georgia packed with the faithful. And one of the first things a visitor will notice is that there are no pews or chairs in most Georgian churches. That's because, unlike typical church meetings, Christians here stand during their services. We say that uh, orthodoxies are like candles because they stand before God in churches. It's uncomfortable to stand for two hours, three hours in a row, but we, we choose to. 
that was the case during a service at Holy Trinity Cathedral in Georgia's capital of Tbilisi. As thousands stood listening to their nation's most famous citizen. His name, Ilya II, and he leads one of the oldest Christian communities in the world. The history of the Georgian Church dates back to the first century AD, when the apostles of Jesus Christ entered Georgia and preached the gospel. At 83, this elder statesman has been affectionately dubbed the most trusted man in Georgia. He's the spiritual father of Georgia and a wonderful example of what it means to be a humble servant of God. You've probably never heard of him, but here in Georgia and surrounding countries, Ilya II is more famous than movie stars and politicians. Patriarch Ilya II is the most respected figure in Georgian society. In fact, his favorable poll numbers are over 90%. In an exclusive interview conducted at his private residence, Ilya II, whose official title is Patriarch of the Georgian Orthodox Church, spoke with CBN News about his country's deep love for God. The Church's past is intertwined with the people and history of our nation. In the 4th century AD, Christianity was officially declared as the state religion. That makes Georgia one of the oldest Christian countries in the world. Tucked between the Caucasus Mountains and the Black Sea, more than 85% here say they belong to the Orthodox Church. And while many neighboring European countries have seen religious adherence fall, Christianity in Georgia is witnessing unprecedented growth. We are like the little spiritual oasis in the middle of this region. Patriarch Ilya II was installed back on Christmas Day 1977, and since then he has managed to single-handedly revive the Georgian Orthodox Church. <laughs> He took over at a time when Christianity was under severe persecution from the Soviet government. The Bolshevik invasion in 1921 witnessed the unmerciful destruction of churches and monasteries across Georgia. Sergo Vardorzanitse is a professor of Georgian history. There were 1,500 churches and 1,600 clergymen active in Georgia. When the Patriarch was installed, there were only 50 churches and barely 70 priests remaining. He initiated a range of reforms to rebuild the church, including an emphasis on young people. He reached out to the youth, encouraging them to attend church and to consider the priesthood. He also took steps to make church services more engaging and easier to listen to. The church showed signs of revival in the late 1980s. Men like Ione Gamarekeli, impressed by the patriarch's humility and dedication to service, decided to join the priesthood. The patriarch stretched out his hands to the people and the people responded. He preached God's word and people turned to God. Then came the Soviet Union collapse in the late 90s, which led to Christianity's renewal. The changes have since been profound. Now there are more than 2,000 active churches, with new ones being built every year, like this massive structure rising on the outskirts of Tbilisi. Also, more than 3,000 people have joined the priesthood, serving the spiritual needs of Georgia's nearly 4 million people. It has been said that the Patriarch inherited a church that was severely persecuted and covered in shroud. Now it is a living body. Nearly three hours after arriving for the service, a slow and frail Patriarch Ilya II finally makes his way through the throngs of worshippers that have gathered to hear him speak this Sunday morning. CBN News is granted unprecedented access to film as hundreds of men, women and children line the ornate halls of Holy Trinity Cathedral to receive a prayer or special blessing. The Patriarch always says that all that's been achieved during his reign is because of the Lord's will. After decades of religious repression, many are grateful that the church in Georgia has not only survived but is thriving thanks in part to one man's desire to bring his nation closer to God. Many kind achievement has been accomplished, and I thank God for letting me undertake such endeavors for our nation. You can bring these amazing stories from Georgia to your friends and family. Simply go to our CBN News webpage and share it on Facebook and Twitter. Folks, we'll be back right after this. Parent.
Parents, the Superbook Bible app is a great way to get your child reading the Bible because in today's busy world, we can use some help. The free Superbook Bible app has fun stuff your kids will love. They'll have a blast learning the Bible, playing great games, watching cool videos, discovering heroes in the Bible. They'll have fun while they learn God's Word. The Superbook Kids Bible app, available now. Hello, I'm Terry Newsom. Did you know there are more than 148 million orphans in the world today? 148 million. But it was three little girls that taught me about the plight of orphans. Eight years ago, my husband and I spent nearly a month immersed in the daily activities of a Ukrainian orphanage as we waited to adopt three sisters. I saw firsthand the utter loneliness, the pain of rejection, and the overwhelming desire to be loved. That experience changed me forever. And out of it grew a ministry from my heart called Orphan's Promise. Today, we're helping orphans and vulnerable children in more than 50 countries worldwide. Thousands of children are now in safe homes. They're being educated and they're learning life skills. I'm asking you to join with me and become family to these children. Will you call the number on your screen right now? Because every child deserves a chance to be happy. Hello? Is this thing on? Hey, kids. Do you love games? And do you love discovering things? Yeah. Well, do you? Yeah. Then you're going to love this. It's the new free Superbook Kids Bible app. You can play games, watch videos, find answers to your questions, and a whole lot more. The new Superbook Kids Bible app. Free downloads available on iTunes and Google Play now. Introducing the CBN Bible from CBN.com. Now, an easier way to study the Bible and grow in your faith. I like your favorite verse. Read separate versions at a glance. Click and read a commentary or cross-reference your favorite verse using the Strong's Concordance. All the right tools to study the Bible, all in one place. The CBN Bible, available at cbn.com Bible or the iTunes App Store. Well, folks, that is it for this special edition of Christian World News. As always, you can find more of our exclusive coverage of God at Work Around the World at cbnnews.com. Tell us what you think about the stories you've seen here this week. As always, you can reach out to us via Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram. I hope you will send us your comments, especially on this particular edition. Well, folks, that is it, unfortunately, for this week's edition of Christian World News. From all of us here in the studio, as well as back in the control room, have a fantastic week. And always remember, God bless you and God loves you. Have a great week, guys.